Who's got the number one talk show in Vegas? We do! Can we go out there on the set tonight? We are! We're gonna have a lot of fun doing it! We will! Allegiance to the Philippines on three! One, two, three! We're allegiance to the Philippines! We present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Luisa V, Trey Tyler Ferry, Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest from Veggie Nation, Nick Brannigan, CEO of Sugarman Enterprises, David Sugarman. And musical guest, Lawnmower Death Rider. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who just got attracted to Wheaties, Mr. Jason Allen! How's it going, guys? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I love it. How are we doing? Doing all right? Woo! Hey, guys, I'm Jason Allen. I'm here with Jason Allen. Jason Allen, how are you doing? Doing all right. Very well done. Welcome to the Downtown Podcast, everybody. Yes, indeed. Give yourselves a round of applause because you are awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. 92-year-old Harriet Thompson became the first, uh, the oldest woman to compete in a marathon when she crossed the finish line at, the, uh, at Sunday's San Diego's Rock and Roll Marathon after 7 hours, 24 minutes, and 36 seconds of running. Very well. Give a round of applause for 92-year-old ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Critics have been raving. They all say there's a very bright light in her future. <laughs> That's because she's old. That's because she's old. Yes. <laughs> she's like, we got it. I got support in the front row here. Like, we, we got it. Thank you. Thank you. We got it. All right. Um, so uh, cannabis has helped a seven-year-old, Khalil Santiago, uh, who suffers from nonverbal autism. It helped him speak his first words. Mm. His first words were, pass that blunt, mom. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Yes, yes. It's good English for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, but believe it or not, actually, cannabis is, uh, is, is they're finding all kinds of uses. Actually, that's how I got Trey to, get, to let me do his monologue today. <laughs> Oh, yes, indeed. All right, so KFC is in the news. That's right, KFC is going to court to dispel rumors of GMO spider chickens. That's right, uh, there's all kinds of, if you look it up on the internet, you see chickens with like, it's got eight legs. So that way, I guess they can have more legs that way. But it turns out to be completely false. It's, it's completely false. All the, uh, all the technicians at uh, KFC, they said, hey, we're not trying to grow chickens with extra legs. We're trying to grow a third breast. Go Total Recall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the government accidentally sent anthrax to multiple government agencies. That's right. They sent anthrax to multiple go government agencies. You know things are bad when the government is trying to terrorize itself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> They're like, I hate us. Yes, I hate us too. Let's send ourselves anthrax. <laughs> it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Uh, sleep drunkenness affects one in seven Americans. It is said to be very dangerous, uh, so you need to give yourself five minutes to wake up and snap out of it. The study can save guys a lot of money. Uh, who knew all these years? You don't have to take a girl to a bar to get her drunk. That's right, all you gotta do is wait for her to take a nap and then you've got five minutes, which guys, that's 10 times longer than we actually need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, drunken jokes, I love it, I love it. <laughs> All right, so just announced, Star Trek 3 will be coming out in 2016 for the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Yes, indeed. Any Trek fans out there? Woo! All right, that's good. That's good, yes. So, uh, so uh, Trek fans uh, are really excited. The director has come out and said, hey, this we promise to take Trek fans where they have never gone before, <laughs> into the shower and on a date with a woman. <laughs> oh. That is true. That is true. Um, <laughs> All right, so Kim Jong-un has recently gained a lot of weight. Have you guys seen about this? Uh, he's gained a lot of weight, but uh, he has an analysis that says, hey, it's not bad for his health. The analysis was also quoted as saying, dude, I'll say whatever, just don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vince Vaughn is also in the news. He says that guns should be allowed in schools. Vince Vaughn says guns should be allowed in schools. He also said his last movie would make money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a really great show for you tonight. Be sure you stick around right now. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! Hey, everybody. How are you all? I'm so 
so excited to be here tonight. You may have seen me behind the scenes, but for all of you special guests tonight, I'm actually doing my very first on-camera interview. Right on, right on. Tonight, tonight, I'll be interviewing an amazing individual whom you may have seen at the new Veggie Nation restaurant right here in downtown Las Vegas. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ouch. That must have hurt. Or on his website, healthconspiracy.com. Without further ado, let's welcome the GMO expert, Nick Brennan. All right, how are you? I'm excellent. I'm, let me tell you how excited I am to be your first interview. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let's, let's not mess it up. Okay? No, right, no. Right. OK, perfect. So actually, last night, I was reading through your blog, mm -hmm. and it was pretty eye-opening. So where exactly did your passion stem from? Well, it originally started from being in my late 20s, being out of shape, overweight, and wanted to be healthy by the time I was in my 30s. So in my research, I was listening to some late talk uh, radio, and I heard of an individual named Jeffrey Smith, who's like the father of the non-GMO movement. And he started talking about all this weird stuff that's been happening to our food for the past decade. And I researched it myself and looked at the studies, did my own um, analysis of it, and saw a lot of what he was talking about was com totally valid. And that not only got me from being a healthier person, but being a, uh, an activist, and advocate for uh, a non-GMO organic food supply. OK, and then is that how your journey really started? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's, it's funny how things just kind of work out when you go for what you believe in. So that was, that was the beginning of it. And then from there, I ended up uh, getting off of the genetically modified organisms, eating more organic foods, I initially went vegetarian, now went vegan. And like all these years later, it was about six years ago when I started doing the research into it. And three years since I became like a public uh, advocate and personality and public speaker against GMOs and a radio host. So all these years later, it's so awesome to see it manifest into the form of vegetation because when you eat organic food, you're already the oddball of the group. And when you're vegan, you're the oddball of the group. And when you're both of those like me, you're the oddball of the oddball. So it's really Tell hard to eat about, out. Tell me about it. Oh, yeah. I can't even. So right. with vegetation opening up, not only are they all vegan, plant-based, but mm -hmm. they hired me to be their non-GMO menu consultant, which is uh, like a big deal for for, for me and, and the community in general. OK, cool. And for those of us who don't know what non-GMO foods are, could you mm -hmm. please explain? Well, what a GMO is, is it's a, it stands for genetically modified organism, where they take a, a species or a DNA from a bacteria, and they insert it into corn or soy to make it resistant to uh, harsh and toxic herbicides. So this has only been going on for about 20 years. There's traditional hybrids. Um, which is done traditionally through the sexual breeding process, but GMO is transgenic. And it's completely new to the food supply. It's never really been studied in long-term feeding studies on animals or humans. There is a long-term study going on now, which involves everyone in this room and everyone in the country as far as GMOs go. But um, when I started doing my research in, uh, in, in being you know, the, in the uh, GMO um, research realm, that a lot of the, what you see out there, when people were talking about it was 95% doom and gloom, this is bad, this is bad. They didn't mm -hmm. offer solutions, so what I kind of did was flip that and really talk about a third of the negative and two thirds of the positive to where I could teach people how to eat organic and non-GMO. Okay, and is that why you started your blog and started uh, being a host at um, Health Conspiracy Radio? Yeah, um, I've always had a, a knack for talking, so I, I felt like a lot of the people out there teaching people how to eat GMO, no offense to them, but are kind of like egg heady and very, they can bore you. <laughs> they can have a lot of good information, but when you talk like this and you're showing these slides, people go, whoa, like they zone out. Right. So what I did was um, uh, started my radio show, initially started on a local Vegas station and then got picked up by Natural News. Dot com, which is the biggest alternative health website. And I cover like a million topics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In addition to the GMOs and the, the plant-based dieting, there's so many topics. That's why it's called Health Conspiracy Radio, because it's just so vast, all the stuff we got to deal with. But once you get educated, uh, you're, you can use it to improve your life and improve your health. All right, cool. And um, a lot of us here want to be more healthy. Mm -hmm. you know, but life, life happens. So yeah, what yeah. would be... Um, the most crucial piece of advice that you would have for us? Well, for like everyone's at different places right now, so I don't know where everyone's at individually, but for, if it doesn't matter if you're trying to be healthy or if you're still going through the drive-through, uh, the best thing to do is just commit to one healthy meal a day. 
because we're all, you know, as, as grown adults, we've had decades of subconscious programming, so it's really hard to go against what we've been brought up our whole lives in, in a split second. It's like hopping into a pool. If the pool's too cold, you're going to hop out. But what you do is just stick your toes in first, and you get down to your knees, and your body gets used to it. Then you can get your whole body in. So I just I, I advise everyone to commit to one organic plant-based meal a day, something you look forward to, something you enjoy. And eventually, uh, you'll, you'll move on to two meals a day, then to three meals a day. Then you'll get to the point to where your brain associates that old uh, dietary habits with pain and, and, and suffering versus the pleasure of eating the healthy foods. OK. That definitely makes sense. I really loved your metaphor about dipping in the pool. Yeah, because it's true. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> so we can check you out at um, healthconspiracy.com. Yeah. And then that's where we can find uh, your radio. Yeah, the radio, it's on healthconspiracy.com, it's on iTunes, uh, it'll be on Stitcher soon, and it's on naturalnews.com or naturalnewsradio.com. Okay. Uh, we do an episode every Tuesday and usually do a, a second episode every Thursday. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. Well, thank you so much for being here. Definitely, everybody, go check out Veggie Nation. I mean, I definitely will. Uh, I hear it's uh, the next best 100% plant-based <laughs> restaurant there is so far. And they just started serving breakfast, too. Oh, uh, 8 a.m. to 11. And if I can say, uh, VegNationLV.com, go to there and sign up for their newsletter to get special deals that are uh, only that you only get from being on the newsletter. OK, right perfect. On. Well, everybody give uh, another round of applause for New York All right. Um, so up next, we have our cuddly and lovable Trey. Interviewing, interviewing uh, David Sugarman. Stay tuned, y'all. <laughs> you made it, Louisa, you made it. This is Bonnie with My Vagabond Soul, and we want to know, what is your dream and how are you chasing it? Follow us as we interview dreamers of all walks of life, entrepreneurs, musicians, artists, and much more. Hear more about this interview with Craw and the Salvation Highway Band. Well, songwriting and playing music is my passion. I want to inspire others that come from struggle to chase their dreams and one day make it become a reality. For this interview with My Vagabond Soul co-founder and artist, Kat Ford. I started writing children's books to encourage kids of all ages to chase their dreams. We believe in chasing our dreams and want to inspire you. So visit us at myvagabondsoul.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Because now that you know your dream, it's time to start chasing it. Keep cool, keep cool. Hey, our next guest not only is a successful financial planner, he's also an MBA agent, a commercial real estate agent, CEO of Sugarman Enterprise, and a political activist. But now he gets the biggest honor of his career and personal life to be interviewed by me. Please welcome David Sugarman. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, man, if I was any better, I'd be you. Oh, that's, oh thank you. You know, one thing at a time. Thank you. Thanks so much. So, um, like I said before, you got a lot of things going on right mm. now. I, why, are you so, why are you stressing me out with all these things that you're doing? <laughs> oh, man, because I get bored. You get bored? Yeah, so that's why you got to do I'm more things? I'm always, looking, you know, I'm always looking for the next best, best thing. Have I you heard of Netflix? Know. That, I heard, I've heard that of it, clears up but I don't world. have a smart, you need like smart TV or something, don't you? Need a, uh, just you get don't? on your phone. It's easy. Got it. I'll tell you after. I'll teach you okay, how to do please, it Okay, please, please, please. Yeah? <laughs> so how did you get started? You started at, at Wall Street. Yeah, I spent 15 years on Wall Street. I was a vice president of seven banks, Deutsche Bank, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and then managing portfolios for professional athletes. And okay. Yeah. Opened a management firm in Miami and a sports agency. And, the rest is, I'm here today, man. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so you, went, you were managing athletes. Yeah. Then you went into becoming an NBA agent. Correct. To handle How did you get into that? How did you get involved with that? <clears throat> you know, it was managing the portfolios of these kids. 
you know, hundred million dollar guaranteed deals. Yeah. And I would move their, their assets from you know a financial guy to myself at whatever firm I was at, and it would be, in a, something like that. Yeah. I get you. Into the bank's pocket. We'll talk about that after. My mic's on. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where were man? Where were we? A NBA agent. Oh right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Because right. where were we? NBA, NBA agent. agent. Right, right. <laughs> but these kids were moving their, their their money into the bank, and it was mm -hmm. a fraction of, of what was left. Oh, and yeah. I just couldn't understand how you can go from a hundred million to six million in twenty four months. I mean, yeah. I could I could probably figure out a way to do it, but yeah. Yeah, you know. I could try. I'll try. You'd be, you'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. Vegas. We're in Vegas, right, everyone? Downtown. <laughs> yeah. Just a few Apple Watches and we're there. <laughs> okay, so uh, your MBA, okay, so you go from Wall Street, now you're an MBA agent. Mm. You're doing both, right? No. 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 Are you done with Wall Street? Done with Wall Street. Finished five. in, uh, I left Merrill Lynch in 2010. Okay, so five years ago you're done. Now you're, done. you're MBA. Um, but now I want to talk a little bit about a guy, Kenneth Bay. Mm. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, and I think there's a few that don't, who's Kenneth Bay? <laughs> or do you want me to? Oh, I mean, I don't think you know that. I don't mean to call you out in front of your people, but. Oh, you want me to say who Kenneth oh, you Bay? Tell me. Who. So Kenneth Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard of this place called North Korea? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Right. We talked about it earlier. Kenneth Bay was an American who was a prisoner in North Korea mm. for about two years, and there was a lot of failed attempts to try and get him out. He was in a, a labor camp. I'll sit back down. I don't want to hog the spotlight, but I ain't going to do the monologue. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So he's, a, he's, a, um, he's an American, but he's a prisoner in North Korea. You want me to tell the story? Yeah, go for it. Oh, God. Yeah, I didn't okay. do it. Well. So, so I apologize for that. So, um, <laughs> man, I got you. Yeah. I'm good with the money, I swear. I see. Okay. So there's a guy by the name of Dennis Rodman. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a basketball player, had hair, drinks, all that stuff. So, Madonna. That was like 30 years ago, but yes, Madonna. Dudes don't forget. <laughs> so uh, he went to uh, the DPR, to North Korea to play in a, a birthday uh, charity event, if you call it, with you know, Kenny Anderson and a bunch of uh, other NBA guys, or mm -hmm. former NBA guys. Yeah. <clears throat> and Kenny was on, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dennis was on a, on a show called The Chris Cuomo Show on CNN. Okay. I don't know if you'll remember, he was drinking, and they brought up this guy, Kenny. Dennis Bay. Robin was drinking? Allegedly. Okay. So, it's a very important word, by the way. So, In your industry. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Um, and they, they mentioned a, a gentleman by the name of Kenneth Bay. So I was home, I was drinking, you know, doing what I'm, whatever I was doing at the time, and um, I Googled the guy, and I saw that he was an American, at that time, the only American in North Korea as a prisoner, and I really, like, dug into it, you know? And yeah. I, I went upstairs to my wife, and I was like, I'm going to get this guy out. Mm -hmm. Just thought I was nuts. That's it. You just made that decision. You you read it. I, and you something said, happened inside of me. I'm a very like you know I'm an energy driven type as yeah. you know individual, right? So yeah. something just kind of like connected. I can you feel know, this energy. Good. Uh, I don't feel it, but I'm sure I will in a few minutes. So <laughs> no pun intended, buddy. <laughs> Man, that came out like pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me fast forward. <laughs> I write his family a message, an email, and said, you know, I'm going to help you if you need money, celebrities, A, B, C, and D. I, so they hired me to represent their family. I okay. spoke uh, to the UN twice. I've been, you know, traveling with, and I can't really go into t too yeah. much detail because uh -huh. this is being filmed. But, you know, I spent a lot of time, and, and I spent a lot of time with the nope, ambassador. No one watches the DPRK. <laughs> <laughs> never, yo, man, this will be on TMZ tomorrow. <laughs> we can make it if you get drunk. Yeah, please, no, I ain't gonna have it. It's water. There's water, water, water. Okay, good. Yeah. So he, I spent eight months on this, and um, I met with the ambassadors from North Korea okay. on numerous occasions. I met with Madam Secretary Clinton. I met with you know the the, the poetess, and I put a lot of time and money behind it. Wow. I got a phone call one Saturday morning, and it was the ambassador from North Korea, and he said, "Say thank you." And at this point, I had spent about six months on CNN talking about it, yeah. you know? The same way we're kind of speaking about it. And uh -huh. uh, they said, say thank you. I said, why? And he said, turn on CNN. And I was, turn on CNN. I started to cry. I was like, yeah. I just, you know, I, I, <laughs> I never met the guy, yeah. right? And, and I, we've spoken since, but it, it was mm -hmm. something that allowed me to align myself with this positive energy, which is like, I know how to do this stuff. Yeah. And if you can relate to people one-on-one -on -one uh -huh. and take off the suit and tie, and I don't have 
you know, I'm not running for Congress today. Yeah. Maybe one day, but okay, I vote for you. Yeah, thank you. And it it, it I'll worked. Be your campaign manager. No, that ain't gonna happen. But I'll take your vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll open for you. <laughs> no, he said no to that either. So okay, that's the whatever. story. I'll so Kenneth Bay's out. He's out. He's home with his family in uh, Washington. Wow, that's, a, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Um, so uh, before we finish, love a drink. You're an NBA agent. Mm. Finals are going on right now. Mm. Who's going to win the finals? Cleveland. Cleveland. Why Cleveland? But if we can do now, ask the question again, and, and then you can edit this. Okay. So you make me look good when you put this. Okay, yeah, you know we'll, do it, we'll so do it later. We'll do it in a week. Say, ask the same question one more time. Okay, who's going to win the finals? Golden State. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the power of editing. That was great. That was amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, David Sugarman. Thank Give you. me a round of applause for that. Stick around, we'll be right back with our musical performance. Take a break and step out to the dazzling lights. Start where it all began. Try your luck on Fremont East. Listen to live music as you make your way down the street. You'll collide and connect with amazing people. Later in the night, you'll find a variety of restaurants ready to satisfy any appetite or craving you may have. Pick any bar, lounge, or cafe. Have a craft cocktail while the kids go down the slide as you relax and unwind with your favorite drink. Explore the shops and galleries you'll find curated items just for you. You'll love downtown Las Vegas. Show the world. Visit us online at lovedtlv.vegas. Place to unload all your sin, it's not a house of God. But some say that He comes around sometimes. I'm no preacher, I don't want to save your soul. I'm just here to make sure that your drinks are cold. It's a job I do so I can get my bills paid on time.
Keep it going for all of our amazing guests that we had tonight. Also, one, uh, our, one of our sponsors for tonight, Rachel's Kitchen. Give it up for Rachel's Kitchen. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Rachel's Kitchen, but it's an amazing, amazing place. Um, they don't have uh, spider chickens over there or anything like that. It's all organic, good food. So uh, check out Rachel's Kitchen. And uh, also, be sure you subscribe to us and follow us, Downtown Podcast, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Once again, thank you guys very much. Have a good night. Take it easy. Give it up for your DJ, Lenny Alfonso. Great job, guys, man. Love it. Love it. Good stuff, man. Awesome stuff. You guys have an album out right now? Yeah. You good? Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm going to look it up.